Formula One fans will finally get the chance to hit the track themselves, virtually at least, with this year's cars when F1 2021 hits the shelves this Friday, July 16th. F1 2021 is the latest edition of the official video game to be released by Codemasters, but is the first since the British publisher was acquired by gaming giant EA Sports over the winter. While EA's buyout came too late to make much of an impact on this year's game, F1 2021 remains the deepest and most accessible F1 title to come out of Codemasters to date, building on the foundations made in recent years. One of the biggest changes for F1 2021 is the introduction of a new story mode called Breaking Point. The mode goes across three seasons and sees you play as Aidan Jackson, a rising star in F2 who is on the cusp of an F1 drive. After winning the F2 title in Abu Dhabi, you get your pick of five teams with whom to start your F1 career in 2020, partnering aging teammate Kasper Ackerman, who is also integral to the story. The first few chapters of Breaking Point faithfully follow the 2020 grid, with news stories appearing throughout the year revealing changes such as Sebastian Vettel's exit from Ferrari and Racing Point's rebrand as Aston Martin, all of which then takes place once you move into 2021. While completing on-track scenarios, you have to navigate a story that brings a taste of Drive to Survive to the game as tensions flare between Jackson and Ackerman, while F1 2019 villain Devon Butler also returns. Some of the additional features don't have a great deal of bearing on the actual story, but still add some nice colour. We also enjoyed the social media feed using some real life news sources, including familiar names like Motorsport Network Director of Digital Strategy, Jess McFadden. Breaking Point does a tremendous job of shaking up the game away from the traditional career and championship modes, and successfully delivers an engaging and, at points, quite touching storyline that makes you really invest in the characters across the six or so hours it should take to complete. Breaking Point should be your first port of call on picking up the game, and we really hope to see a sequel in F1 2022. After its introduction last year, the Driver Manager Career Mode, My Team, takes further steps forward. The presentation is more polished, making you feel like you are on the start of something exciting when you launch your own team. You again get your pick of last year's F2 field to choose as your first teammate, and can thereafter dip into the driver market, manage sponsors, facilities, and R&D. The deluxe edition of the game also includes icon drivers, Ayrton Senna, Alan Prost, Michael Schumacher, Jensen Button, Nico Rosberg, David Coulthard and Felipe Massa, who you can sign into your teammate if desired, but they won't be available to AI teams even if they enter the driving market. Besides my team, the regular driver career mode has also been tweaked to allow players to start out in Formula 2 before making the step up to F1. Another great new aspect of the game is two-player career, which lets you team up with a friend online, either as teammates or rivals. Given the days of split-screen racing are largely behind us, although F1 2021 does have that setting if desired, this is a wonderful way to facilitate two-player gaming beyond the simple head-to-head -head races online. For all of the career-based modes, the R&D approach has been overhauled to make it more streamlined, while you can also quickly simulate practice programs to accrue resource points instead of going through practice on track. It makes for a snappier, speedier mode for casual racers, but those looking to get as close to the real thing can still run their full programs, which are rewarded with more resource points. The same goes for qualifying. You can either do one shot or full qualifying, and the race lengths are fully customizable. And you can adjust it as you go, depending on how much time you have. And that balance is something F1 2021 strikes perfectly. The settings for the game can be tweaked a lot more this year, depending on the challenge that gamers want as well as the difficulty of the AI, other aspects such as financial income and R&D points can be enhanced or reduced to make the game easier or harder, depending on the experience that you want. F1 2021 may not be a simulation game by nature, but you can get quite close to one by adjusting the settings accordingly. Be warned though, simulation damage means you will pay the price for even the slightest bit of contact, especially with the improved damage model this year that sees more bits of the car break off. The driving experience in F1 2021 remains as rewarding as ever, with the cars feeling a little more planted and predictable compared to last year's game. The AI has been refined nicely as well, making noticeably more aggressive moves to defend positions. It forces you to plan attacks, sometimes a few corners in advance, instead of simply launching dive bombs knowing they will leave the door open. One thing we did notice was that the AI seemed a bit stronger in race trim compared to qualifying, but tweaking the difficulty setting as you go, and inevitably improve, should allow you to strike a good balance. The controls have also been refined a bit for this year, offering better control over ERS deployment to allow you to plan attacks and defend when needed. But again, if you want to keep things straightforward, you can simply set this setting to Auto and let the game do the work for you. On release, F1 2021 features 21 tracks, with Imola, Portimao and Jeddah set to be added as a later date as free downloadable content. 
China can only be used via the breaking point story, while the other cancelled races, Canada, Singapore and Australia, can still be used. Australia attains its 2019 layout despite the plan changes for this year, while Abu Dhabi will also not be tweaked to incorporate the upcoming development work before this year's race, which is understandable given how stretched Codemasters team is getting three new tracks onto the game already. Once again, you have the option to customise season length in career modes. This again helps speed up campaigns if you're not looking for an uber long season. Particularly as you work your way through career mode seasons, the chance to chop and change tracks from the calendar is really cool, even if you can't change the order of the races. Online multiplayer has been made more accessible through a new social play option, but those wanting to truly test themselves again can access the F1 esports leagues or set up their own championships with their friends. The car liveries and race suits have a similar level of customization compared to last year through the Podium Pass shop where you can spend the nicely named Pitcoin. We may still crave a full livery editor, similar to Gran Turismo Sport, but there does appear to be a wider variety of designs on offer at launch compared to last year. You're also now able to add a sticker to the car's halo, with another new addition being a victory radio message that plays out to your rivals when you cross the line first. It all adds up to make F1 2021 a game that casual fans and diehard followers of F1 alike can easily sink hours into without getting bored. It offers the most customizable, accessible and varied experience to date that should keep us busy until the next game comes around in the summer of 2022.